Okay, for the function 2x e to the 2x, the first thing it asks is the limit as x approaches negative infinity and infinity. So first you should think about what's going to happen if you plug in negative infinity. Well, e to the 2 times a negative number, and we can pick a number that's big, like negative 10,000, is going to be equal to 1 over e to the negative 20,000. Or sorry, 1 over e to the positive 20,000, because it's a negative exponent, drops down to the denominator. So uh, what that means is this is super small. So we're multiplying this function by this insanely small number, which means that it's just going to approach 0. Now, when x goes to infinity, both of these are going to be large. e times 2 to the infinity and 2 times infinity are both large numbers, so that's going to approach infinity. But anytime e to the, like an exponential function is involved and you're going off to negative infinity, you know that exponential function is going to approach 0, and 0 times anything is just 0. So that's the justification for this one. Um, so then now it's going to ask for the absolute minimum, which we need to take a derivative to determine this, because recall that a function hits a minimum value when the derivative is equal to 0, because we need the slope to be 0, right? So we want to take the derivative first, which we'll have to uh, apply the product rule to do. The derivative of the first function, 2x, is equal to 2. Leave the second function alone, plus the first function, 2x, times the derivative of the second function. The derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times 2. So then this is going to combine to 4x. 2 times 2x is 4x. So now we need to figure out when is this equal to 0. And this is a little bit tricky, but we can actually factor out a common factor because there's 2e to the 2x here, and there's 2e to the 2x here, right? So if we factor out 2e to the 2x from here, 2e to the 2x, what's left over? Well, this is just 1 plus, looks like we're going to have 2x equals 0, because if we take out 2e to the 2x, we're just left with 2x. Okay, if we take out 2e to the 2x, that just leaves a little 1 there. So then when is 1 plus 2, well, so when is 2e to the 2x equal to 0? The answer to that is never, because 2e to the 2x is just going to look like this. It's an exponential function that approaches 0 and infinity, okay? So we're not worried about this part for when, determining when the derivative is 0. But we can set 1 plus 2x equal to 0, which is going to happen when x equals negative 1 half, if we do some basic algebra. And again, if we plug in x equals negative 1 half here, we're going to have 0 times something, which is going to be equal to 0. So this is the only place where the derivative is equal to 0, which means it's our only candidate for the absolute minimum. So... So let's review how to make a table to justify this. So we're going to say that our function is going to be split up by this place where the derivative is 0 and the function's flat. So f of x, what's happening from negative infinity to negative 1 half versus negative 1 half to infinity. Okay, and then what is that? Uh, and then what's happening to f prime x? Okay. So, so on that first interval, negative infinity to negative one half, we're looking at f prime x and trying to determine is it positive or negative. So if we plug in a, if we plug in a negative number to this, well, this is always going to be positive, and at first, this is always going to be negative. Okay, if you plug in negative 100, you're going to get 1 minus 200, which is negative. And a positive times a negative is indeed a negative, which tells me the function starts by decreasing. Okay, once we hit negative 1 half, this part of the function is 0. This is still positive, so that's 0. Once we pass negative 1 half, this is now going to be positive, and this is positive, which makes the derivative positive which means the function is now increasing, so we have a minimum at x equals negative one-half. So we technically have to justify that to show that it's a minimum, because technically if the derivative is zero, that could imply that there's a maximum or a, a, a shoulder point as well. So this is our justification that it is the minimum.
So this last one might throw the part C might throw you off a little bit because you might not have thought about the range for a while. But if they ask you a question like this, it's a good way to show that you understand what's going on when you found that absolute minimum. So in part A, we know that we as x approaches infinity, we go to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, we go to zero. So our range at the very least would be zero to infinity. But that absolute minimum value will tell us how low our function goes, if it goes below zero or not. So we just found that at x equals negative one half, that's the absolute smallest the function's gonna get. So we're gonna plug in negative one half to our function. So we go f of x, or f of negative one half equals two times negative one half times e to the two times negative one half. Okay. So what is two times negative one half? That's equal to negative one times e to the negative one, which is equal to negative one over e, which is smaller than zero. So our range then is gonna go from negative one over e to infinity. Okay, it's equal to negative one over e and then a, a closed print, or an open parenthesis at infinity. So at inf negative infinity, the function approaches zero. At positive infinity, approaches infinity. And at negative one half, it dips down to negative one over e. So what this will really look like is it'll look something like this. Okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna be approaching zero. Okay, it's gonna be approaching zero. It's gonna dip down for a sec, and then it's going to go up to infinity. So this is our point at negative one half comma negative one over e, and then as x goes off in this direction, our y value is gonna approach zero. So our range goes from negative one over e up to infinity.